Bajor Fort is the base for the campaign by Pakistan's Army and Frontier Corps to capture Loisam, a Taliban stronghold only 13 kilometers away. Bajor itself is a small district, 70 kilometers long and only 30 kilometers wide, with a population of just under a million. The army tell me there could be a thousand foreign Taliban fighters here, along with a few hundred local militants. Well, it's actually a beautiful day today, although the artillery was firing throughout the night, but um, I hope that we'll be able to see the military operations later on. This is the road to the Taliban base in the town of Loisam. Success here is important because Bajor borders Kunar province in Afghanistan, which is such a Taliban stronghold, the Americans call it enemy central. This whole area is completely deserted. This is as far as we can drive. I'm told it's safer to go on foot from here. There is no clear front line. The Taliban could be hiding anywhere. Colonel Javed Baloch and his men fought a hard battle to capture this village on the way to Loisam. We came here about four days back. We started the battle from here. We were ambushed here for seven hours. Right. I lost an officer and eight men. And we were there in that. They have prepared this, these places over years. I it's mean, a classic guerrilla warfare. Yeah, it's a classic guerrilla warfare. They're trained, you know, these are the CDs, these are their training pamphlets. This is Jihad Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. This is Tora Bora 3. I mean, these have such like things we are recovering from here. This is Kunar province, which mm -hmm. is adjacent to this place. The Taliban who normally, you know, they won't appear in front of you in camera. We have recovered their photographs. This is all, I mean, nonsense. So is he... Is he's, he maybe one? Of, he's one of them, maybe. Posing in a. We, yeah, we found that they are using this black uniform, mm -hmm. this Malaysia uniform. How would we know that he's one of them, or one of us, or one of police, or who is he? Mm. So they, they, that is how they are fighting. Mm. They so they're very well organized. Yeah, they're very. Now, as far as the very well organized thing is concerned, just look at this. They have the training pamphlets. This is all AK 47s, all kinds of pistols, all kinds of grenades. These are the rockets, how to prepare them, how to arm them. These are their complete ranges. It's now easy to see why the advance here was slow and bloody. Once they had secured this compound, Colonel Javed's men found a network of tunnels dug by the militants, linking their defensive positions. This tunnel, this is the exit. Down there. It comes out from here. Yeah. It goes to this house and then to the next house. All the way underneath? Yes, all the way underneath, sir. The tunnels can easily withstand a mere hand grenade. This house is still smouldering days after the battle. So this big gun that's firing now, it's not a cannon, it's a recoilless rifle. The village is a labyrinth of alleyways. Pakistan's army was trained for conventional war and is having to adjust its tactics to fight this kind of insurgency. These are the things that we have prepared. Right. Because we also wanted, they were on the, in the same village. So we have used kind of, you know, the same S techniques. Same techniques. So that we have made some holes. Yeah. to keep our own movement safe. That is how we fought, uh, you know, okay. house to house and kept going in and then we secured the complete area. Okay. So this is what we have done, not them. As they advance, compound by compound, the men bring up their munitions. In the first week of Lieutenant Colonel Javed's battalion moving into this area, um, just in the first week, they've lost 10 people, four dead and six wounded. And that's just in the first week of engaging the Taliban or militants in this area here. Okay. 
Have they booby trapped this area? Sorry? Have they left booby traps? No. Oh. Frankly, we haven't found it. We were very, you know, Aware. careful. We were very watchful because we expected a lot of booby traps. So they but probably cannot leave the booby trap because this is these are their own houses. Yes, I see. They Actually, the because they, they come back, reoccupy this again and again with new teams. I see. So they we don't want to destroy it. it. So they don't want they don't to destroy want. their own houses. Yeah. We just look at the thickness of the wall. So if you are confronted with such like walls, what would your bullets do to them? It's amazing. It's amazing. It's amazingly thick. Yeah. These are firing positions. Yeah. Now, he has to just take a gun out from here. Yeah. Anybody moving on the road is going to fire, and by the time the person moving on the road will know, so you wouldn't have yeah. that. Yeah. Right? And when he sees the cobra flying over, yeah. Or you put your guns in place. Yeah. So that is the hole that he uses to go down. So they'd hide. Oh. Yeah. This is the basement of that hole that we were looking at upstairs. If um, they needed to make a getaway, they'd quickly just jump down this uh, opening um, into this large area. And again, the walls are very, very thick and really heavily reinforced. As we come into the compound, shooting suddenly starts along the main road. Every time the Cobra comes, they show some kind of a retaliation. And this is actually helping us to understand that they are still here. So this is now ours. But we are safe. Sure. <laughs> because if we couldn't hit them behind these walls, so they can't hit us behind these walls. That's the awesome. trick of the complete story. This is their fire. You will clearly the lights, understand. The lights like sounding. One, that's the AK-47. AK they can, you know, come, go back, mm. and come again tomorrow. Mm. They can go back. It's a if, long if and hard. Say, yes, yeah. If somebody says that it, uh, the threat has been eliminated totally, it has not been. Yeah. And they will not have the facility to sit Occupy and but they go somewhere else. Yeah, but they, they'll go somewhere else, they'll dig the holes, they'll mm. fire and run away. Mm. So that kind of thing will go on. The Taliban who had retreated now seem only two to three hundred yards away. Colonel Javed wants to assess precisely where they are. Now you see, since we have extended to this place, this end of the, this is the, end of the uh, village. Right. So after this, there is a depression, there is a lot of growth, and then on the next hut. Yeah. From where they say that they, now they were firing from that. Right. So this is how they are going to, you know, right. keep your roots disturbed yeah. and keep yeah. them, you know, keep us engaged. Yeah. But uh, if, if we have found it today that they are still here, so we are going to try and destroy this by tomorrow. So the only way is that you keep your arm well extended and keep it, you know, keep, keep the things him at long distance. Yeah, keep him, uh, hit him at a long distance. Yeah. Once the firing stops, we go outside the compound to see the Taliban defenses recently discovered. The wireless operator warns us there's about to be an explosion. Uh, stuff your ears. <laughs> there are no thick walls for protection out here. Given that this is a very fertile area, I mean, Bajor. Yes, it is. With very, I mean, as we can see behind us and all of over, cornfields, everything. everything. This is another thing that they use to hide through, move through. Yes, actually at this, you know, this time of the year, I would say the crops are almost four or five, maybe six feet high if you look back. Mm. Perfect hiding so, area. So it's, it's a perfect hiding area. I think that's the cave. Uh -huh. You see that? Yeah. That's a cave that they have prepared. It's a tunnel. Yeah. And on the top of that also you see some stones yeah. put together. That is a kind of a trench that they prepare for so the image. So they go up to the top, fire from there. Yeah. 
and then come back down. So that's the trick that they use. It's impossible to say whether the area is safe. Things change by the minute. Jeez. Just heard an incoming round. Yeah, it, it, it ricocheted. I don't know which side it was fired from. Now, these are the trenches again, you see. Okay. This is from where they have been firing on the road. Yeah. You see, now it is very difficult for the Cobra when it is flying yeah. overhead yeah. to spot these people from here. Yeah. Like you saw, there was somebody was firing at them. Yeah. How could Cobra spot? Yeah. That's the problem. The men are now concerned that the Taliban may be very close to us. They take position in case we are attacked. The Taliban could pop up anywhere from their network of hiding places. The run across the open ground to the compound is nerve wracking. It's very, uh, it's amazing to see their, uh, how deeply prepared their defenses are and how impossible it is from helicopters or any other sort of um, positions of the Pakistani military to identify them with defenses like that. Yes, it's very difficult actually. That is why I was saying that the nature of war is very slow. Yeah. It's to be taken like that, I mean, inch by inch, yard by yard. We had to, you know, take this and then gradually, you know, see the area around. Yeah. And then we found this. Otherwise, if you walk through this area, you would, know. Captain, you would never know. And you will be ambushed again and again in the mm. same places. When ultimately, they can't, they can't, you know, go, this, they can't uh, remain forever. Yeah. Know, because it, it is just a, a kind of a mafia. Mm. As you know, it can't win over a state and or horrify or terrify a state. It can't terrify the whole, whole world. Colonel Javed has given me a glimpse of what his men are facing every day. It's classic counterinsurgency that has cost his men 84 lives in three months. As I head back to Peshawar, I will see another face of this war, hundreds of thousands of people from Bajor displaced by the fighting. <laughs> 